Major funding for these programs is made possible by grants from Chase Commercial Term Lending and Capital One Bank, New York Community Bank, the Wickoff Group, MNT Bank, Perfect Building Maintenance, Genova Burns, Jean Tomasi and Webster, Greenberg Traurig, Kilroy Architectural Windows, New York's Window Company. Additional funding is provided by grants from AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, Aerial Property Advisors, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Laumi USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Colliers International NYC, CPEX Real Estate Services, Cushman and Wakefield, Customers Bank, DDG, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, First Nationwide Title Agency, Flushing Bank, Friedman, Gemini Real Estate Advisors, Hap Investment Developers, Herrick Feinstein, Investors Bank, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Institute at Syracuse University, James Orfanides, Chairman USRealty.com, John Katsimides, Red Apple Group, Margolin Weiner and Evans, Madison Realty Capital, Massey Knackle Realty Services, Matone Group, Meridian Capital Group, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, New Banks, People's United Bank, SJP Properties, Sterling and Sterling, Stonehenge Partners, TD Bank, Terra CRG, the CUNY TV Foundation, the Continuum Company, Urban American, and these friends. So they, they're in the milk business. Okay, from the milk business, you know, then they say, you know, maybe there was something Cumberland Farms, maybe there's somebody else. You know, may, maybe we'll, we'll open up a milk store. And, you know, oh, forget the milk store with eight employees. We'll grow, grow to 180,000 square feet. How do you grow over there? And then you say, nah, you know, one store is not enough. Let's get another store. Another store is not enough, so they got four stores. Then they say, hey, come on, let, let, let's get into other businesses. Let's make cookies. Let's make all this. We got sisters who make all this. And this has grown. Everybody knows Stu Leonard's, and I'm happy to have Stu Leonard Jr. Here. It's nice to be here, and I love how you tell those stories like that. <laughs> so now, you know, if we go back, you know, it's like going to the Mayflower with your family. I mean, yeah. going back all the way, we're not gonna, and then we're going to get up to Grandpa. When did they come back here in the 16th century? Yeah. How they how they arrived? Well, from Holland, they all came in. In England, there was, uh, you know, we don't sort of know, but they were English and and from Holland, and then they came over and they started baking bread here in New York City. Right. They were in, in Brooklyn. Amsterdam. They were. Yeah. They, and then they were in Brooklyn, like in the 1860s. Yeah, they went up. They went into Brooklyn, but everybody was in the farming business. Right. And then they went to Westchester in like 1890. They went up to a farm in Belleville, New York. Right. Up there. And then what happens later on? And then they went to White Plains. They had White Plains Dairy. Now, White Plains Dairy, that goes Early to... Early 19th. That's Grandpa, right? Yeah, uh, that, now, that's right. Now, uh, your grandfather had a history that he was a tough guy, right? Yeah, cigar chomping kind of guy. Right. He, he, he didn't fail to use curses. <laughs> I did, you know, I never met him. But that's what it, uh, yeah. in the books I know he was your old school... Now, what happened was he went to work for... The, um, the Stewart family, and, um, and so they both met, and, and uh, Patrick Leonard came over from Ireland. Okay. So that's sort of how the Stewarts and the Leonards hooked up. Okay, so, so Grandpa was a, Le was a Leonard, right? Yeah. Okay, and how, how does Grandpa... That's on my mother's side. Right, and... This is uh, I mean my uh, grandmother's side. On your grandmother's side. Yeah. Okay. And how do they meet? Your grandmother and grandfather. Um, they met in high school because my Irish uh, grandfather was a great, great baseball player. And she was one of the cute gals at the high school in Norwalk, Connecticut, and they both met. The Leonards had the dairy. Patrick Stewart from, from Ireland 
met the Leonards then, met her, and they both married. Okay, so that's how Stu Leonard's game. Okay, so now Grandpa is in the milk business, right? And he's delivering milk. And then your, your father is born in what? 19... 29. 1929. And he was but, going to ag school. Right, your father was UConn. going to ag school at, at UConn. And then the, the company was called Clover Dairy. Clover Farms Dairy. Okay. And I grew up right next to that. This is Clover Farm Dairy. It's very interesting because we have to re tell the story how your father, Stu Leonard Sr., met your mother. Yeah. How was I hope that? everybody can follow this. Yeah, no, we're trying to make it easier. Okay. But anyway, my, my, uh, you know, my, my dad was basically took over his uh, family dairy in the early 50s after his grandfather had passed, after his father had passed. But what they did before that was they were delivering milk to my, you know, a German family. Right, a, a, a Holocaust survivor. Your grandfather was a Holocaust survivor. Right, and so, so my mom was born in Germany. Th that's how the your father got married to your mother. Right, he was delivering milk to her house. Your dad was in the, in the milk delivery business, and he, he he also liked the stock market. He liked playing in the in the market, and he what was this with the wood the ski planks? You know, my dad's a creative guy. You know, and I'm lucky. You know, it's nice to. Be with people like that. He's 85 now. He's the, they're coming up on 85, um, but he's he's creative and he always had ideas, and even he was always interested. He thought he could do well in the stock market. I remember as a kid there were big charts and graphs up in his uh, den at the at the house, and um, he loved all these computer companies. Even Fairchild Computer, I remember he was always interested in, and Disney he was always interested in. And then what he did was he, he was a water ski champion also. He had really worked. He'd finished delivering milk in, during the day, and then he'd go out and water ski in the afternoon. And he went into this ski. Yeah, he designed a ski trainer. Right. Which was basically, you know, we, we all, I mean, water skiing is, is our family sport. But we all would take this, you'd take this uh, two wooden bars, and you'd sort of clamp it over your skis, and it would be a handle like that. And you could basically get right up. It was really easy to learn how to ski. Your skis wouldn't go like so that. So what happened with the, 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 the ski planter? Which so you... anyway, he was real hot on this thing. He had a whole bunch of them built. I remember we had, a t we had to put the, the stuff together with them because you, know, you had to bolt the wooden bars into the metal frame. And uh, he went to some ski shows and somebody came in and copied it. He didn't have any copyright. He didn't know anything about that. And they copied him, and this big company started coming out and doing the same thing he did. And he, I remember we used those wooden bars as firewood. That's right. <laughs> for like a whole but, winter. But what happened was he had met this guy who, her, uh, who had Groose from Cumberland Farms out in Elmont, Long Island. What happened? It's actually Bernie Gauss, and it was a famous dairy out there. And, you know, Cumberland Farms, the Hasiotis family started opening up. These little dairies. Yeah, and people back then, you know, started driving more, going out to supermarkets and picking up food. And uh, so my father realized, gee, I got to change this business. And just then the state came in and said they were going to put a highway through it. And so one of our ice cream guys, Mort Perry, a great friend of the family's, he... Um, said, come on, let's take a ride out to Gow's Dairy in Elmont, Long Island. And what he did, he had a, his dairy plant was right there. He bottled the milk. It came out into the store in a conveyor fresh. And the customers would buy it at a really good price. So my father said, wow, I'm, I'm going to go do something like that. So he came over to Connecticut, borrowed 485000 Which is interesting. He got it from the SBA, which SBA. is very hard to believe. My father was here. He'd tell a story. He said the amount of paperwork was... was exactly proportionate to how much you borrowed. So he borrows that and he opens up this dairy called, uh, still called Clover. It's small. It's right, it's not even called Stu Leonard. No, it's called this, Clover, it's still Clover. Clover Farms Dairy. And you had like, you only sold like seven items, I think, right? Yeah, eight items when we opened. Milk, milk of course, milk, you know, bread, butter, eggs, sour cream, cottage cheese, everything that would go on the milk truck. So what happens next? So anyway, he opens this store up uh, with, with glass windows. You could look into the dairy plant. All the milk trucks were going out the back delivering milk. Um, and uh, he opens this dairy in 1969. And 
customers loved it. This it is Norwalk? Norwalk, Connecticut. It was fresh. You know, you, you, there was a show and sell, we call it, so you could watch your product being made fresh right there. It was a great price. And uh, it's sort of down from the farm. It was, we got the milk fresh from the farm. So customers just it resonated. Then it came out into the store, you know. It, it, just, every, it just started going great. I, I mean, it, obviously there's problems uh, operating at the beginning. Right, but, but how do you thing. grow from seven, eight items with uh, you know five or six people working in the place yes. to uh, 180,000 square feet. Well, it's 110,000. Okay, yeah, that's small. It's, oh, it's still, still big. But but you add it on and add it on. What happened? 24 additions on the regular. So it gets busy, and all of a sudden a piece of a, a house comes up for sale next door, and and my dad buys it, and um, and you expand the store a little bit and make another aisle. You know, it's still one aisle. It was like a racetrack, and you add a little turn to it. And then there's a restaurant next to that, and they had a hard time, and they ended up selling the restaurant. So my dad bought that. So he put another addition on, another addition. You know, you were the dairy, okay? Yes. And, I mean, you were written up in, you know, uh, Ripley's, and believe it or not, is uh, yeah. the largest dairy right. in, uh, around and the highest sales per square foot, but later on. But how would you get the additional items? You, you said some of the vendors would come later on, like the. the you know what happened? You're, you're fruit, buying the, all your. The fruit vendor would come, yeah. and. No, you're buying your milk, and then one of the one of the, my my father's friends says, "Hey, you know, I got some sweet native corn that just came out. It's unbelievable. Bring it on in." Okay, so you put a big pallet of free, fresh native corn in, and all of a sudden, you know, same thing, fresh, low price, you know, really good quality, and. Um, you put that in the store and you start selling like truckloads of, of this fresh native corn. Then the guy says, I got some peppers, I got some squash. Next thing you know, you have a whole fruits and vegetable department. Then we started buying from California. We'd get direct trailer loads from California, uh, from direct trailer loads from Florida, where we're getting our corn right now, from right down to Bel Belgrade, Florida. And so the idea is just buy it direct from the farm and bring it into the store. Right, but then you brought in, you also brought beef from Colorado. Yeah, then we met some ranchers. They said, hey, we got some great beef, but so we did the same thing. I mean, we had to learn the meat business, and we hired great butchers and everything to help us. But we did the same thing, direct from the ranch, fresh, great price, um, it just works. So now, during this period of time, you're born, okay? You're, <laughs> okay, it's, it's you, a younger brother, Tom, and you have a couple of sisters, right? Right. So let's talk about your growing up. Where did you grow up? In what town? I grew up in, in Norwalk. I was born in, the, in Norwalk, Connecticut. We moved to Westport, which I've never, I've never lived more than, really lived more than five miles from the hospital I was born in. So I'm, I'm a very local guy. I've lived all my life right, at, right in that Norwalk, Connecticut. And, and part, being part of the, the Stu Leonard family and from that, that working environment, yeah. you were in the store. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. You we you. grew up. We grew up in the store. It's sort of like your. I mean, we just every the family helped. I remember we never were open on Thanksgiving, and so um, and everybody doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving, but you know it's it's a big holiday for our family. So w I remember my dad. My mom had forgot some stuff for th our Thanksgiving dinner, so my dad said, "Come on, let's go over to the store." He was going to unlock it. We weren't open. And uh, he said, we, we had to get some butter. I guess we ran out of milk or something. So anyway, we're all in the store with my dad. And all of a sudden, there's a knock on the door. Hey, uh, you know, do you mind if I come in? I, I need some butter and some you know, milk, too. Come on in, my father would. You know, he never turned a customer away from, from the store, ever. They, if they're in before we open, they come in. Right. I mean, you have that rock over there built in, in, in one of the stores. Yeah which has your rules, you know, <laughs> always the customer's number one, you take care of that. But we started opening Thanksgiving after that because my father realized how many people wanted to shop that day. Right. So, you know, the whole family was running the store that day. High school was interesting. You said you, you, you spent a couple of years at a boarding school. No, I went to high school. I was working pretty much, you know, more than studying. Right. Okay. <laughs> You know, I'd go in, because we just opened the store when I was in high school. So, and it was so busy that I would literally finish school and just go work till 
my dad went home, which was like nine, ten o'clock at night. Right. My mother would be so mad at him because he kept me at the store so long. Uh, same with my brothers and sisters. But anyway, I finished high school. I went to apply to colleges. Uh, you know, they sort of were like, hey, those grades aren't going to cut it. So I took one year and went to a postgraduate course up at a, a private school, uh, Westminster, up in Simsbury, Connecticut, small school. And uh, they really, all of a sudden, like, I, I really just repeated 12th grade. Right. And English. Then, all and then you went to Ithaca College, right? Yep. Then I was able to get into the college, which was great. Had a Wait, you, you were on the crew business. team? Yeah, I was a captain of the crew, crew, uh, crew up there. I was a, I'm not that big. Right. So uh, they used to call me Tippy Toes Leonard because every team shot, I'd get on my tiptoes, so I looked yeah. tall. So <laughs> graduate high school, and you had a good experience. I think your father bought you a little present with one of his friends, right, when, when you graduated? The oh, morning? yeah, that's right. The, I was the, the first. The, the $2,100 ticket on Pan Am? Pan Am flight number two. So tell me about that because that has a great influence on your life. Yeah, it was, uh, was you know, one of those eye-opening events in your life where since I was the first one to graduate from college really in my whole family um, with all the immigrants that we, we, you know, who started out working hard at the beginning. And, um, and then my father said, what do I get for... for um, for your graduation, and a buddy of mine who, whose father had Grandview Dairy out in Long Island, uh, he said, you know what, Pan Am has a flight number two, $2,100 that goes around the world. And you can get on and off it as many times as you want. So I recommended it to my father. He said, okay, fine. And that was my graduation present, and I threw a backpack on and went with my buddy. But you met somebody on that flight, right? Because yeah. you were going to go to Price Waterhouse or something like that. Because That's right. Grandpa, uh, your mother's side, always said accounting was a good area for you. Well, that's the only reason they could make it in America. They couldn't speak English. They were German. So as my grandfather learned English, the only thing he knew was accounting. And he got a job doing that when he came over. Right, and he ingrained this into you. And you were going to go and become an accountant. Yeah. Right. I was going to work for Price Order. Right. So you're... You're on He's the, now, by the way, our accounting firm. So you're on the, you're on the plane, yeah. and you meet this individual, right? Yep. I remember I was flying in, in you know, Mideast there from Kathmandu over to New Delhi. And um, there was a fellow next to me with a turban, you know, and really nice guy. We started talking. And uh, he was like some crazy thing, like 10th like generation or something in this family business. And he... I remember he like put his hand on my arm and he said, your energy should go toward your family. Your passion should go toward your family. He said, I wouldn't go work for another company. He said, you should put that energy into your family. It was like an epiphany for me. I was like, I'm over here seeing the way the rest of the world lives. And I realized I was sort of in a little glass bubble where I grew up. And um, here in America, there's just good food and, and showers and, you know, and, and education. And I realized, you know, I should put my time into the family business. So you come back and you decide to work on the family business for a period of time. But you then felt that it was important for you to, to get like an MBA. Right. And you end up in California, right? Right. I applied to business schools um, against the best wishes of my father and his advisors. They didn't really quite understand why I did, but um, I ended up getting into a few schools around the country. Um, but I also got into UCLA and USC. And when I went out there, I was like, wow, I want to live in California. But that really had a, a great effect because when you were at UCLA and you, were, you even were able to pay for your tuition by getting residency, yeah. as you told me, what you did was you learned about how stores failed. You learned about convenience stores and, and department stores, and, and which really gave you insight on how to grow a business because you were a one-store operation at this time. Right. I, you know, I, I remembered when I was out there, they teach you strategy, really, to look at the business and where you are in the market. But also what I realized was every great company has challenges all the time. 
So it's not about, you just can't turn a switch and say, oh, this is going to run like clockwork. You've got to keep improving, and there's problems that happen that you have to solve. And I realized that Stu Leonard's was just like every other, like Disney, like IBM, like McDonald's. I mean, they all had problems, too. But also, there was another good thing of going out to California. It was the fraternity, yeah. the fraternity house, right? Well, the sorority yeah. house. Well, what I did, I saw all these beautiful California girls walking up uh, Hillgard Avenue out there right next to UCLA, and I said, I'm following them, you know. <laughs> and they had a sorority, and I got a job washing dishes. Uh, they call them hashers. Right, and, so, and you, met, uh, you, my you, wife. you met your wife over I there. I met my wife, yeah. You met your wife over there. 30 years now. 30, 30 yeah. years. And then you come back to the business, right? Yeah. Then I came back in 1982. Okay. You come back in 1982. When's the second store open? Uh, we, it was 1991. 1991. So, yeah. So from 82 to 91, what, what are you doing at the, the business? I was working by my dad's side, basically. I was in his office with him. You know, I was um, just trying to apply some of the things that I learned at school and also listen to the way you really do it. Right, you know, which, which was learning under the tutelage of your dad. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, 1991, it really was worse because in 1989, you and your wife lost your son, right. Stewie, yeah. uh, in a, uh, was it swimming pool? Drowning. Drowning, which you then created this great foundation, yeah. the Stewie Foundation. Yeah, so that, that was a, just, we had our whole family together down St. Martin. It was a beautiful family day. It's my daughter's, actually my oldest daughter's birthday. January 1st, and uh, somehow a month saw the commotion. I mean, he had just slipped in the pool chasing a balloon and, and drowned. Right. And it was devastating. And then 1991, the second store opens. Yeah, right in the middle. Yeah, of, right in the middle of all this Right, my father grief gets and everything. indicted for tax evasion. And, right, so. You know, it was a very, but very but tough time. I think time. The, my, what my happened was died. the nine years that you worked hand in hand, the eight years with your dad was really valuable. Right. Was because impression. it was able for you to then take over the business. Right. And, yeah. you know, you, you grew the business over there. And yep. uh, then then the business grows even more later on, okay? Uh, that's when you uh, that's when you decided, uh, how did you, did you have to get a passport to go to Yonkers? <laughs> Yonkers, yeah, that was a big step. Okay, you know, so we had opened in Danbury, Connecticut, another store, and my brother Tom ran that at the beginning and, and uh, built that up, and that turned out to be a great store. And then we ventured across the state lines. You went to the state lines, yeah. you know, to, to, to Yonkers, okay? Yeah. To Stu Leonard Way, I mean, yeah. okay? And they, right off to Bruckner, the Bruckner 87, they yeah, have Stu Leonard know, Drive. Right, with Costco, right? With yeah. Costco and Home Depot, it was risky. Right. We, yeah. we rolled the dice. You know, right. and, and uh, imagine opening one of our stores right next to Costco. Um, but it's w our best store right now. Right, and that's what, about 180? That's, uh, that's 110,000 square feet. Right, and there, that's when you, you also decided to get more involved and you opened up the liquor store, the first. Right, that was the beginning when we opened that store. We just tried opening, we, we figured let's try wine because I loved wine. Uh, and, and actually, David Taub from Long Island, who, who uh, uh, owns Palm Bay Imports, uh, he took me under his wing and uh, helped me get into the liquor business in New York. Um, and uh, the reason is, is that the guy who, who, one of the greenhouses that sold us poinsettias in Connecticut was best man in his wedding. So he made the introduction to, to David Taub, and, and that was the beginning of us in the wine business. And liquor. You know, what I was joking with you, I've, I've been to Danbury and I've been to Yonkers. It's oh. like a, a maze to go through your stores. Yeah. You, you got to pass every aisle, okay? Yeah. And you also have to stop by because, you, as you said, you have the, the mozzarella yeah. and you have the, the cookies. Fresh mozzarella. Yeah, we got that idea from Arthur Avenue. Right. Going down there. Yeah. Now, but you also said your sisters got involved in, in different aspects yeah. of the business, right? So during the 80s, my sister studies French. And so one of the things she decides to do is get her master's in French. And part of that is that you had to go over to France and live right in Paris with a family. So the family she lived with, they were bakers. They had a boulangerie over there. So she would wake up in the morning and go make fresh butter croissants, baguettes, all, all, everything. So that's, that's when you went into the baking And she business. came back and she said, you know, let's, uh, 
we should get in this croissant business. And well, what are croissants? We didn't know that, you know, they weren't that popular. And um, we set her up with a, with a table in the, in, the, in the store with a little old pizza oven that was right. hot wired. You know, she started making these, rolling all the butter so, in there. So she, she took care of that. Then your other sister did what? She was, she's a vivacious, she loves like people and everything. And she got into the people and the human resources. She took care of the human resources. And you know what she's done, which is really nice. She's helped build up our, our whole, you know, people part of the business. And, and, um, which, which you pride because the, you, you, you pride the, the way the people work for you and you pride with your customer relationship uh, on that. Very side. important to us. I mean, today, even my, my uh, sister is out in uh, Farmingdale, Long Island, where we have a, a wine store, and they're just doing a big appreciation lunch for all our people. So today we have four regular Stu Leonard's dairies right, food and stores. Food, food stores. But you don't have, you're not as big as a real food store. You have like 2,000 items, but great items that people love. Yeah, but they're big stores. Yeah, they're that, big stores. That, and you have, what, nine liquor stores? Yeah, the, the f different members of the family. And, and speaking of the family, tell me about uh, your children. <laughs> tell me the names well, of your children. Well, one of them's here today, Madison. I know, She's but right so, up so, somewhere so, out there. So, so tell me about. She's 19. Ma is Madison yeah. the oldest? She's the youngest. She's the youngest. She's yeah. 19. Yep. What does she do? She's up at Cornell right now. She just finished her first year, and she's in the in the, business. In the hospitality program or in the not the hotel, although she you know. So that's Madison, and then she might take and some the next courses one? over there. Um, but the next one's Chase. She works for Nestle, because we have a rule in our family that all, our, our everybody children, has to go to work somewhere else. Before. Three years, and, and so she's and with Nestle in Stanford, Nestle she, Waters. And what is she doing for them? She's in the marketing. And, and, and the last, the oldest. And then Matt, uh, or Ryan, who's our third oldest, works here in New York City for Constant Contact, or a single platform, which does a lot of digital. digital which I use marketing. myself. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So she's. So she just got promoted, and she's a, a manager down there. She's doing really well, and our oldest daughter Blake is just going to go to NYU to get her. She's a sommelier, worked for Gallo, worked for a wine importer here in New York City. Um, and she's going to go to NYU to get her master's in marketing in September. So, you know, from the, the little clover. Four girls. <laughs> so from the clover, you know, from the clover dairy to the Stu Leonard's uh, empire, uh, it's been a great story, and I'm really happy you're here today to be well, with Well, thank you. It's a pleasure. It was a lot of fun to be here. Thanks.